Hello everyone, welcome back to our Level 1 Listening Comprehension Series. Today, we're going to learn about an amazing journey that water takes all around the Earth, called the Water Cycle. Pay close attention, and at the end, I'll ask you some questions to see what you've discovered. Ready to dive into the world of water? Let's splash into our story. Water is always moving, even if we can't always see it. The water cycle is how water travels from the earth to the sky and back again. Let's find out how it happens. First, the sun heats up water in rivers, lakes, and oceans and turns it into vapor or steam. This part of the journey is called evaporation. The water vapor goes up into the sky. Next comes condensation. When the water vapor gets cooler, it changes back into tiny droplets of liquid. These droplets come together to form clouds in the sky. Sometimes it looks like the clouds are having a big gathering. Then we have precipitation. When the clouds get too full of water, the water falls back down to the earth as rain, snow, or hail. This is how water returns to the earth, watering plants and filling up rivers and lakes again. Last is collection. The water that falls to the earth collects in oceans, rivers, lakes, and even underground. From there, it starts its journey all over again when the sun shines. This never-ending journey is how we get rain to water plants and fill our lakes and oceans with water. Isn't the water cycle fascinating? Water is always moving, even if we can't always see it. The water cycle is how water travels from the earth to the sky and back again. Let's find out how it happens. First, the sun heats up water in rivers, lakes, and oceans and turns it into vapor or steam. This part of the journey is called evaporation. The water vapor goes up into the sky. Next comes condensation. When the water vapor gets cooler, it changes back into tiny droplets of liquid. These droplets come together to form clouds in the sky. Sometimes, it looks like the clouds are having a big gathering. Then, we have precipitation. When the clouds get too full of water, the water falls back down to the earth as rain, snow, or hail. This is how water returns to the earth, watering plants and filling up rivers and lakes again. Last is collection. The water that falls to the earth collects in oceans, rivers, lakes, and even underground. From there, it starts its journey all over again when the sun shines. This never-ending journey is how we get rain to water plants and fill our lakes and oceans with water. Isn't the water cycle fascinating? Now, let's see how well you followed the water cycle story. Question number one. What turns water into vapor in the first step of the water cycle? A, the moon, B, the ocean, C, the sun, D, the clouds. Question number two. What is it called when water vapor cools down and forms clouds? A. Evaporation. B. Precipitation. C. Condensation. D. Collection. Question number three. How does water return to the earth in the water cycle? A. Evaporation. B. Condensation. C. Precipitation. D. Collection. Question number four. Where does the water collect after it falls back to earth? A only in rivers, b, only in oceans, c, in oceans, rivers, lakes, and underground, d, it doesn't collect. Let's review the answers and learn more about the water cycle. Question number one. What turns water into vapor in the first step of the water cycle? C. The sun heats up water and turns it into vapor. This first step is called evaporation. Question number two. What is it called when water vapor cools down and forms clouds? C. 
When water vapor cools down and forms clouds, it's called condensation. This is how clouds are made. Question number three. How does water return to the earth in the water cycle? C. Water returns to the earth as rain, snow, or hail through precipitation. This happens when clouds get too full of water. Question number four. Where does the water collect after it falls back to earth? C. After water falls back to earth, it collects in oceans, rivers, lakes, and even underground. This ensures there's always water ready to start the cycle again. Fantastic job, everyone. Today, you've learned all about the water cycle and how important it is for our planet. Keep observing the world around you and you'll notice this amazing cycle in action. Join us next time for more fun and educational stories. Until then, keep exploring and asking questions. You're awesome!